Hello, Jordan here from Artisan Electrics, and I'm here today to talk to you about smart thermostats for electric underfloor heating. This is a big problem that I've come across recently where many customers will order a Nest or a Hive smart thermostat, and they realize that it's not actually capable to switch such high currents that electric underfloor heating have. So what is the solution? Well, I've come across a great little smart thermostat by a company called Heatmat, I'll put a link in the description below so you can buy one for yourself. And I'm going to talk you through and walk you through the installation that I did this week to remove an old dumb thermostat for underfloor heating and replace it with a new smart underfloor heating thermostat, which can be controlled by an app via your smartphone or tablet. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If it's been of benefit to you, please hit a thumbs up and share it with someone else who you think could benefit. Enjoy the video and have a great day. So here we've got the thermostat connections, which is an in-floor thermostat. So basically that wire goes down into the floor and measures the floor temperature. Um, then here we've got the power in, so neutral in and live in, which is symbolized by this little sine wave AC symbol. So that's one and five is live and neutral in. And then in the middle here, two and um, two and four, we've got the live and neutral out load, which goes to the underfloor heating element. So in this case, you've got two wires going out. Some of them just have one. And then the earths are just connected to the metal back box here because there's no earth terminal or metal parts to be earthed on this casing. So here we've got the heat mat Wi-Fi underfloor heating thermostat part number here NG touch Wi-Fi thermostat NGT 2.0 Wi-Fi and we're gonna just swap this over So as you can see, we've got the same kind of connections, basically live and neutral in, live and neutral out, and the thermostat, which is slightly different. They do supply a new thermostat cable, but we're gonna try and reuse the old thermostat. And if that works okay, then that's easier than trying to pull in a new one. Getting these covers off can be a bit tricky. So what you've got to do is push a screwdriver in here and then you just leave it up and that takes this front piece off. And then that allows you to then put this case over and then click that back on basically. But what you've got to do first is put the terminal screws which are provided here mount it up. So first we'll do the connections, then we'll mount it with the screws and then we'll put the cover on. Just something important before you start working on anything like this is make sure that the power is turned off. So this switch here is to isolate it, but then you need to confirm that the power is turned off by using a voltage indicating device, which is what I'm about to do now. So here I've got my Fluke volt detector and I can just check to make sure that this is working correctly. So this is the switch that isolates it. 
And what I need to do is check to make sure that the actual thermostat is dead. So I'm gonna check first on a known live source. So that's a socket that's live. You can see my volt detector is working okay. Now I go up to my thermostat and just check and everything is dead. So that's good. I can start work. So now that it's all livened up, you just need to go through the settings with the language, the date, the time, and then it will ask you, once you've selected the correct time, what type of floor you have. So if you've got tile floor or soft floor, which would be, in this case, it's like a laminate type floor, that would count as a soft floor. So you just uh, use the touch pad to select that. And then when you click the other button, it will show you the settings for the schedule. Manual, you can set the manual temperature. So in this case I've set it to 23 and then you can hear it click and it comes on and will start to heat up. But if you want to do an actual schedule, you need to click heating schedule and then you've got two types of uh, week you've got either work days home days or all days are different so you can select which one is most appropriate for your own situation and then if you do event schedule you've got a work day it's saying okay what time do you wake up what time do you leave home and then what time do you come home again and then what time do you go to sleep so in between those times when you're not at home or you're at sleep it will actually uh, turn the heating down and in a home day, which is where you're at home all day, you just do wake up and go to bed times. So there's quite a lot of flexibility with the scheduling and it's very good. Now there's also the app. So here we're on in the instructions and you can see under app control, 
It says these settings allow you to set up your thermostat for connection to your wireless network through which the thermostat is able to connect to our thermostat cloud server. Server connectivity enables you to control your thermostat remotely using the SWAT app. So you need to download that SWAT app but first connect the Wi-Fi to the thermostat using the following settings either WPS or manual setup where you basically choose the network name put your password in etc and confirm to connect your thermostat to your Wi-Fi network and then once it's connected to the Wi-Fi network then you can use app control the smart Wi-Fi and touch thermostat app on your smart device and the thermostat will have a QR code where you can pair it with your mobile phone uh, the thermostat ID will be displayed and you can enter that into the app and then confirm it all and that will enable you to control the thermostat from your mobile phone so I hope this video has been of benefit to you if it has don't forget to hit the thumbs up button and share it with a friend have a great day Thank you.